Welcome back to the expert walkthrough for Demon's Souls, ladies and gentlemen. I am your host, Let's Play Dark Souls HD. And today we're going to do an episode entirely dedicated to pure black world tendency events. So let's go over to our tendency tab and we'll take a look and I'll explain these mechanics to you. So your tendency can be red based on the little eyeball icon that's beneath each arch stone. You'll notice that the first three are sort of white for me and that's because... As I'm doing this part, I uh, already took care of the pure black world tendency events in the first three art stones, but don't worry, as soon as we do this intro, I'm going to go straight into that stuff and I'll show you every single one of them, rest assured. But I want you to take a look at the last two, the Shrine of Storms and the Valley of Defilement. Take a good look at that eyeball icon, because that is pure black world tendency. When it's as dark as it can be, and those little red sparkles are coming off of it, that is how you know your tendency is as far as it can go, which is pure black. So we're going to include all of these in today's episode. I'm um, just doing this little intro part so I can show you guys how to prepare for it. Now, what you want to bring with you for this stuff is for sure soul remains. And don't worry, I'm going to show you during each example why it's smart to have soul remains. And the other thing, this is totally optional. I mean, so are soul remains, but they just make it easier. What I would highly recommend, bring with, highly recommend you bring with you is Archstone Shards. You can buy these from patches for 5,000 souls. They're kind of expensive, but I would buy one for each Archstone. Well, maybe except for the first one, because Mil or Mildred is not very far away from uh, the Archstone. But in the Tower of Latria, and especially in the Stonefang Tunnel, so like Archstones 2 and 3 are, are particularly annoying to run back or get back. You might want to get one for those. And then same with the Valley of Defilement. So I would say buy a minimum of three of these. At least. So that way you can teleport back without losing your souls. Normally it would be fine to use the Nexial Binding, but some of these Black Phantoms that we're going to fight are quite powerful and drop a good amount of souls. And you might be you might be able to get a couple levels out of this depending on what level your character is when you decide to do these events. So lastly, look at our character tendency. Mine is pretty neutral right now. But I'm going to show you which NPCs you can kill in order to get this to go down. You have your choice of which ones you can kill. Usually you only have to kill two of them, usually. But I'm going to show you which ones will and will not affect certain quest lines. So I'll give you an idea of who I would recommend you kill. Um, but don't do this while you're doing these tendency events. I would say don't kill any NPCs until you are at the very end of the game and you're ready to do... Um, what's her name? Why can't I? Mephistopheles. Once you're ready to do Mephistopheles' questline, only then, when you are literally at, like, the last boss in the game, which is when I'm going to do it, that is the only time that you should worry about pure black character tendency. We can worry about pure black world tendency in the meantime, though. But, like I said, what you should do to prepare for this is you should go to Grave Robber Blige, who is in the Shrine of Storms. He's at the Ritual Path and buy soul remains from him if you don't have any, and then go up there and see our buddy Patches and get yourself a couple Archstone Shards, so that way you can teleport back without losing those souls that you get for beating these powerful enemies. But without further ado, we're going to hop into these Tendency events, and I'm going to show you exactly how to deal with them. So let's do it. So we're going to start right here at the very first Archstone in the game, the Gates of Balataria, and we're going to run to the same area that we've already been through one time. We've already gone through here and killed this NPC once, but she was in her physical form, and she's going to be in the same spot, but around a different corner. It's going to trip you up a little bit, and it's going to be a much more difficult Black Phantom version of her. So you don't really have to fight these draglings. I mean, the only reason I'm fighting them is just so they won't chase me up the hill. I mean, you definitely want to get rid of this second set, because you never know how much distance you're going to need to get between yourself and this enemy. So, I would not recommend leaving these guys alive, because their aggro range is a little bit annoying, and they will interfere during your fight. So, definitely don't try to fight her when you're not at full health, because I get hit by her, and I'm telling you, she does a lot of damage. So watch this. Normally, she's around the right-hand corner, near the steps. Do you see those little red sparkles, though? You can just barely get a glimpse of her. She's around the left side now. You see this maxed-out dragon longsword is not doing very much to her. So we're gonna have to switch it up. That's better. Okay, but watch this. You see that? She did half my health in one hit. You really don't want to be sloppy against this enemy. 
It's not that she's gonna disappear or anything, but you can fight her as many times as you want, but the problem is, you know, why waste the time? Instead of, uh, instead of being sloppy like me, you may as well just do your best against her, get rid of her, because she drops a pretty desirable weapon that a lot of people just may employ in their playthrough once they get it. So she's melted, and from this enemy, you get the guillotine axe. Super cool weapon. It's definitely not good for us. It is a strength scaling weapon. It takes 20 strength to use. It is pure physical damage, and it's not very heavy, but for what it weighs, it hits like a truck. It's a super cool weapon. Reminds me of Bloodborne. Now we're going to head to the Tunnel City, which is the second archstone in the second world. I would not bother fighting these guys. I mean, you can just run past them. You might get hit once or twice, it doesn't matter, as long as you just keep hustling your way through. So I get hit once, it's no big deal. Just keep sprinting through. And the nice thing about this is we're not going to have to drop all the way down. It's not going to be that big a deal. Just going to roll through these. Now what you can do for this part is to help minimize the damage. It's not really going to matter what's a little bit of extra grass, but what you can do, I guess I'll just show it here anyway, is we don't need the clean ring since we're in human form. I'm going to put the cat ring on just to, just to get rid of some of that damage from falling down. And like I said, it doesn't matter because we're not going to be in the heat of battle as soon as our feet hit the ground or anything. We're going to have plenty of time to prep because he won't see us right away. But we are going to take down Black Phantom Skurva the Wanderer. He is arguably among the most difficult of all the Black Phantoms, but I'm going to show you how to trivialize him. There would normally be two lizards down here, but I think we've killed them the maximum amount of times, so that's why they're not here for me. Now get those soul remains ready. And once they're ready, what you want to do is you want to get close enough to lock onto him and just throw him. So I'm going to see what magic does. K84. That's not very good. That's not going to get the job done for how much it costs. So I'm going to recast that. That's much better. Okay, so yeah, we're just going to set his ass on fire. Now this is actually super duper good damage. This is much better than what I'm used to. If you try to melee him, it's not going to go as well. Don't worry, he's not shooting at me. I mean, it looked like he was right there, but I assure you he was shooting at the soul remains. And just like that, Skurver the Wanderer is melted. He might give you more trouble than any of the others, just a heads up. And he gives you the Talisman of Beasts. So the Talisman of Beasts is one of the best talismans in the game. It's definitely better than the regular one. We don't have the faith to use it. We like the stats, but if you have them, highly recommend you swap this for the regular one. All right, moving on to the third archstone. Again, we're going to go to the very first archstone in this level, which is the Prison of Hope. And the way to Ridiel is a little bit confusing. I swear, no matter how many times I beat this game, sometimes I have a really hard time finding him. This time I did okay, but just be careful on your way to him, because again, if you are going to fight his Black Phantom, that means you need to be in pure Black World Tendency. And if you are in pure Black World Tendency, the Mind Flayers are automatically as difficult as they can possibly be in your playthrough. See that? Plus five Dragon Longsword does not even one-shot them anymore. They are dangerous. So be very careful against these guys. I think we can one-shot with a strong attack. Yeah, because thrust damage is much better against them. back for you in a little bit, lady. Okay, don't worry about that guy. He's not going to aggro on you. Not unless you shoot him first, and you don't have to fight him. So in order to get to Ridiel, the way I always remember it, is once you're descending these stairs to go down these these levels, you want to go down until you know you've reached the love the the section like right here where the mind flayers go through these separate hallways that are parallel with each other. That's when you know 
you're about to get to where Ridiel is. Bam, there we go. So watch out for this first Mind Flayer, and then you probably already saw him over there in the distance. So there he is. He's a pretty dead giveaway. You can see him from all the way over here. Ridiel is also going to be on the more challenging side. He's got a ton of health, and he hits very hard with that weapon of his. So we're going to employ the same strategy against this guy. Once we get close enough to lock on, we are just going to throw the soul remains and call it a day. Now, just because he goes for the soul remains doesn't mean he can't hit you, so make sure you keep that in mind. But this is kind of the strategy that I employ against these guys, is just keep throwing these, getting my spice back, and then bring the pain. And once you finish this guy off, you get one of the coolest weapons in the game, the Phosphorescent Pole. This is a phenomenal weapon. I used it on my very first playthrough of this game, as a matter of fact. It has physical and magic damage, and it's one of the only triple scaling weapons in the game. We don't have the stats for it, and it doesn't make sense to use it on this character for us, unfortunately, because we don't have the strength points, but this is a super cool weapon, and it has a crescent property. It will regenerate your MP while you have it equipped. Takes colorless demon souls to upgrade, but it is a phenomenal main hand weapon. Now we're headed to the fourth arch stone, the island's edge. Again, very first arch stone of this level. This is a super easy one because he's right out in front of us. However, you don't want to aggro the skeleton. So just stay here. He will see you. Trust me, if you just stand there for a second, he'll come running right at you. Now this was sloppy. I did not mean to throw that at him. I probably should have fireballed him in the face first. So now I have to waste one of my soul remains, just getting an opportunity to heal. But once he's distracted, he goes down pretty quick. You're probably noticing that a lot of these black phantoms have a similar health pool, and that is mostly true. But this guy in particular is easiest because he probably has the least amount of health out of all of them, and he just dies really fast. And he's right at the beginning, so it's nice and convenient. You get a second hiltless for killing him, we've already got one of those, but now you can have two. Now we're going to head to the final and probably most difficult of the Black Phantoms. You're going to go to the Swamp of Sorrow, and this one has the most annoying run, but is also the most dangerous because out of all of the Black Phantom enemies that you will face when doing these tendency events, Cell and Vinland is the only one that requires that you run past Black Phantom versions of already difficult enemies, and you will see what I mean. So we're just going to take the regular path down here. And I really don't like messing around with these depraved ones in Pure Black World Tendency, so I'm just going to melt them the best way I know possible. So once you're jumping down here and doing this part, we do know that there's a group of them that's already down here, so just be careful. They're going to aggro you and start chasing you right away. I would say just run through the swamp. And no, you don't really have to do anything about poison resistance here or anything like that. It doesn't matter because... You're going to be spending time in the poison pool anyway, so just make sure you have curatives, but don't worry about using the poison resistance ring or anything like that, or switching your armor out. You really don't have to worry about any of that. But as you can see, we have black phantom big guys. I recommend the thief ring for this part. The reason for that is going to become very apparent in about 20 seconds, but just make sure you stay on the outskirts so you don't aggro any of these guys. Wear the Thief Ring for this part, you'll see why in just a second. You're not going to be able to get past this part without aggroing these guys, unfortunately. But as long as you have the Thief Ring on, they'll stop chasing you. So do it exactly like this. Hug the outskirts, and run. Just keep running. They'll miss you, don't worry. Run along these planks, and when you get to about this part right here, they should quit chasing you but only if you have the Thief Ring on. So make sure you wear that. And blast these mosquitoes while you're at it. So there's Black Phantom Cell and Vinland. There are two things you need to worry about with Cell and Vinland. The first thing is that she does not get affected by the swamp. She can move very fast through it, just like the Meat Cleaver enemy that we already fought. 
The other thing is she will cast Dancing Magic Field, which will prevent us from being able to do our most powerful attacks. So what we're going to do, we're going to do the same thing we did before, man. Lock on, throw that shit. So this was kind of weird, man. I don't understand this part. For some reason, she she went for the soul remains, but she's still dodging me. It's like <laughs> she wasn't even looking at me. It's kind of strange. Um, it was a little bit of a fluke. It only happened during that round, but once she's staring at, or once she's once she's distracted by the soul remains, we're just going to do the same thing we did before. We're just going to keep distracting her, keep refilling our magic, and we're just going to blast her. And when you beat Selim Vinland, you get her sword, which is called Blind. It is a curved sword. It's a very cool weapon. It's got a very unique property about it. It doesn't have magic damage or anything. It's purely physical, but it's got an S scaling and dexterity. It requires 24. It's very light. I'm talking 0.1 units, and it ignores shields. So when you attack this with this weapon, people can't block it. It's super interesting. It's a nightmare in PvP. All right. So now that you've got all of your Black Tendency world events out of the way, now I'm going to show you which NPCs you can kill to get your character tendency to pure black without ruining any quest lines. The Filthy Woman, but only after you buy as many poison arrows as you think you're going to need. The Ivory Queen, because she does not sell anything that we cannot farm or loot. And the Dragling Merchant, who is guarded by Red-Eyed Knights, so you need to be careful when you're taking this guy down. He's not easy to get to, but he's one of the best ones to kill, because we can get everything he sells a different way. Alright, and just like that, once you have chosen the characters that you want to execute, Go back to the Nexus, and we will look at our menu just to make sure that we are pure black character tendency. Looks good to me, and has the little red sparkles. But if you're not sure, the dead giveaway to really see if you have pure black character tendency is you're going to run up one level of the Nexus, and we are going to look for Mephistopheles to appear. And there she is. She will not be here unless you are pure black world tendency. Or, not world tendency, character tendency. Gosh. Check out her drip. Looks pretty similar to ours, don't it? I can see that you have killed before. No one can blame you for that. Demon souls are too precious to relinquish. Perhaps a slayer like you would have an interest in my offer. I want you to kill Saint Urbain and his followers. You will be rewarded amply. Do we have an agreement? A reason? Ha! Huh. Just think of it as an opportunity to remove a competitor. Excellent. I have high expectations. Okay, so now we're doing Mephistopheles quest line. So the cool thing about Mephistopheles is she's going to give you really good stuff for completing these quests. Now granted, you do have to make this decision on your own. This is not a required quest line. You can skip her entirely in your playthrough if you want, but I like the stuff that she gives, so we're gonna end up doing this stuff for her. But here's the thing. You should really save Mephistopheles for the end of the game, which is where we are. We only have the end of the game left. All we have to do is 1-4, and there's only one boss left, which is uh, King Alant. So we're about to beat the game, but I always tend to do Pure Black World Tendency afterwards and i'm going to explain my reasoning behind that so you guys can get a better grasp on the concept of tendency and how it works so let's look at our arch stones real quick as you can see all of our arch stones are no longer pure black because we have taken down all of the enemy phantoms in those levels and collected their rewards but here's the thing pure black world tendency makes the arch stones significantly more difficult it will cause the enemies to have more health and will raise their attack against you and it also will cause black phantom versions of enemies to spawn in different places of the level. Like the Shrine of Storms, for example. When you are running along the cliffside of the Ritual Path, black phantom versions of those big gold skeletons with the cleavers will spawn, and they are absurdly difficult. Even in the beginning of the Archstone, you'll see black phantom versions of the black skeletons with the dual katanas. It's no joke. And it's like that for all the Archstones. 
we saw in 1-1 on our way to uh, Mildred, who is the the phantom that we killed and got the guillotine axe from, those draglings that, that spawn there hit way harder than normal ones. So just keep that in mind. I would highly recommend you do the pure black world tendency at the end of the game, so that way you don't actually have to complete the art stones in order to do those events. So you'll have an easier time if you do it just the way I showed you. And then I also especially would not recommend you do not go pure black character tendency until after you have done all of the pure black world tendency events, because all you're going to do is kill characters for nothing. For example, if I had killed the merchant in the Tower of Latria, the draggling merchant, and the filthy woman before we did these black tendency events, it would be a waste. Because every time you kill an enemy black phantom in one of these art stones, it actually raises your character tendency. So make sure you do your character tendency after you do your world tendency. That way you don't kill people for nothing. And make sure you don't kill any of the named characters here in the Nexus. I mean, you can... I think you can kill... Maybe one of them? I think the blacksmith, but why would you want to do that? You need him. Make sure you don't kill anybody here. Any special named NPCs. Like, literally anybody. Not even Patches. Because... That will mess up the quest line. If you kill the people that she asks you to kill before she asks you to, you can't complete her quest. And we don't want to miss out on that. So just make sure you go out into the world and kill the merchants or the, the whoever's filthy man for all I care. Just kill the merchants that are pretty much useless to you that you don't want and don't need. And get rid of them and use them to get to pure black world tendency. And then aside from that, we're going to do her quest before we kill King Alant. And we're going to collect those rewards. And there's only one other thing I need to mention about... Uh, about Mephistopheles, and that's that you need to kill Yurt, the Silent Chief, before she will appear. She will not show up if he's alive. And the other reason you want to kill him is because he will kill NPCs in this Nexus and essentially do exactly what she would have you do while you beat bosses. And you don't want to do that. You don't want to have those NPCs taken away from you before you have done everything you want to do. But we'll go over how we assassinate all these people and when to and not to do it depending on your playthrough in the next episode. I know this one was kind of short, and I apologize for that, but I feel like these Black Tendency events kind of need their own episode in order for me to show you exactly what to do. And then once we finish her quest line in the next episode and kill all these guys, which is, it's going to be an absolute massacre. Poor people. It's going to suck. But uh, I do want to show that part of the game and collect all those rewards, just so I can show you guys what you can get from it, and that way you can decide... If you feel like it's worth it in your playthrough. And then we'll just beat the game. And we'll go take down King, King Alant in 1-4. Do the last Archstone. It's going to be a lot of fun. So thank you guys so much for tuning into this relatively shorter episode of Demon Souls. I've been your faithful host. Let's play Dark Souls HD. And I will catch all of you guys in the next video.